Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest to welcome to the podcast this week. He was most recently the winner of the 2022-108 tournament of the best White Sox fan on Twitter against some fierce competition. Uh, you'd be hard-pressed to find a bigger White Sox fan than this guy uh, right here. He loves the Southsiders uh, and sees nothing but red as well. So big Bulls fan. He's on Twitter at Brian Knights 3 Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Knights. Brian, how are you doing, my man? Hell of an intro. I'm doing great. How are you guys? Man, shoot. Baseball season is here. We got th – this is great. It doesn't matter the weather outside, snow coming, whatever. Life's great. It's the best time of year. Hey, man. Hey, you man. still riding a high from the 108 uh, championship? It, it's died down a little bit, but we get to call ourselves champ for a year. So <laughs> the first few days it was like, I can't believe I fucking won that. But now we're uh, – it's it settled in a bit. And we're the champ. Being a competitive person, any type of win, especially in a tournament like that, is just awesome. It got it got the juices flowing, especially when the polls were as close as they were in those final two matchups. It it, it was like October baseball. It was unbelievable stuff. I felt like you were <laughs> actually in March Madness basketball. Yeah, <laughs> legitimate. Instead of losing everything, like I usually do. <laughs> uh, but for those who don't know, uh, what is the one hundred eight tournament? Uh, it's I, this was like the fifth year I think it was, and it's just the from the 108 guys do a fantastic job with it, um, running a Twitter tournament of White Sox Twitter personalities and just a bunch of polls. Beef Loaf does a great job uh, racking out the bracket, and uh, it's just you fire off content, and that tends to get you wins. You don't fire off any content, you tend to get smoked. So uh, yeah. it's, it's, just, it's it's strictly a Twitter. Uh, a Twitter poll. So if you don't get the the tweet out there with some kind of exposure, um, yeah. every so often your tweet's gonna get lost in uh in Twitter. Yeah, you tweet the you tweet the poll once in the morning and nothing else the rest of the day. You're cooked. So you got to feed it with some videos and good stuff like that to try and get the people that aren't already your core audience to vote for you. And, and uh, you were on vacation. Off. You were on vacation, so you had a beautiful background too. <laughs> yeah, for the for the first round. I was in the Dominican, so that uh, oh, that's awesome. That that definitely helped with with the drunk content. <laughs> <laughs> and so, obviously, we're talking here in you know early April, late March. You got a banner at least on the way that you can hang in the rafters because banners fly forever. You got something uh, coming in the mail to commemorate the win. Yeah, uh, we got the we got the statue on top of the bean T-shirts that uh, dropped mid tournament. So those will always be, I guess, tied to the win. Um, and we're, we're waiting on a trophy to get shipped from uh, my sock summer. So we'll see what the trophy looks like. I have absolutely no idea. Hopefully it rivals my socks or uh, summer of George's squirrel from last tournament. And I can't wait to see what it is fired up. You, you also gave away a, a Latos signed baseball. I did. I got a, I still have it. I have to, uh, I have to ship that out, but uh, yeah. See my that's that's Pat. that's how you win tournaments like this. My guy Pat's getting a, a statue on the bean shirt and a Matt Lato signed baseball. <laughs> what more could you ask Not for? Invaluable. <laughs> <laughs> One in a million. Yeah, it's just a random batting practice ball from whatever year he was on the team. <laughs> yeah, that feels like that was forever ago. Uh, but I gotta ask, Bryce. So you got you know. I wouldn't say all of, but a lot of your notoriety with the post game videos. Did you? What made you decide to start doing post game uh, after White Sox games? What What got you into that? Was it just a place to just you know vent or fire off ideas? How'd that start? Uh, it It technically started with the Bears because I was, it was like three. I think it was twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen on like Snapchat, I just like was bored in my dorm room and just started making like Bears videos post game. And uh, people started to like those just on Snapchat. And then so I started doing White Sox ones at the same time, basically, like, just bored in the dorm room. Let's talk socks. And uh, then I transferred it over to Twitter, and it, it took off. So that that's basically it. it. started off basically as a joke in the dorm room because I was drunk, and <laughs> it turned into this. So it's pretty good. That sometimes seems how the best ideas start. Yeah. I mean, if I – you had a great – I had the great setup there at Western, games on all the time. And I was like, what else am I going to do? I, let's talk sports. And people liked it, got good feedback from 
just some assholes from high school. And so we turned it on Twitter and I don't know, we're 5,100 followers now. So the rest is history. Pretty, pretty good start in a year and a half or so. That is uh, awesome. Like you said, they're, they're wildly inter- entertaining, but did you think when you started doing these that it was anything was going to happen with it or did you just do it for the hell of it? No, I was just doing it for fun. And I mean, I'm still doing it for fun. It's just people for some reason like to listen. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it started as, like, shits and giggles. Let's just see if this works. And it did. So we're just going to keep on rolling with it. And if people didn't, I probably still do because it's just – it's fun to me. And it's like – even like you said, even if people didn't listen to, like, you're obviously, a, you know, as big of a diehard as, as there is out there. It's a place for you to, you know, celebrate the wins and vent the losses. Like, like you said, even if no one's watching it, it's got to be a good place for, you know, a diehard like you. Yeah, it's a way for me, like, it, going back to last season, like, if it was a middle of the game, two o'clock game in May, I wouldn't, like, there would be no way to remember that, like, in October. But now that I have all these videos, I can, like, look back and find, like, the cool mo- moments from the season and look back on them, I guess. Oh, for yeah. sure. So, like, especially, like, kind of predictions and stuff throughout the seasons and, like, explaining this, how, how, what they need to do to get better and stuff. Like, that's cool to, like, be able to look back uh, with your videos. Yeah, it was, you like, just... late July of last year. I said, start placing your Luis Robert MVP bets for next season, and now everyone's hammering future bets. So, <laughs> predictions work sometimes. So, game gets over with. You just, you just pull the phone out, and that's what happens? It's all yeah. on the phone? Yeah, pretty much. Just whip the phone that. out and – selfie style video and throw it up sometimes it takes one take sometimes it takes 25 it just depends (laughs) (laughs) gotta respect it man well let's get into it while we're here the white Sox season uh kicks off uh right here this week what what are some things uh we'll get into some of the things you're concerned about here in a minute but what are some things that you're looking forward to the most with this white Sox team that a lot of people are picking to be playing deep into october and november it's the same as it always has been these pet it's just you're looking for these big name guys in the core to put up numbers and lead this team to a, a world series because that's what we're here for we're here in the world series window to win a world series you can't waste this opportunity and uh Luis roberts is the best baseball player i think i've ever seen at least in a white Sox uniform he's incredible so i need a full 162 of him healthy because he's going to do unbelievable things Jose Abreu is arguably one of the most consistent first basemen in all of baseball since he came into the league. Tim Anderson's a superstar. The pitching staff will see what happens. But uh, there's a lot of big names here that as long as they uh, can stay healthy, it's going to be incredibly fun to watch. Is it World Series or bust for you this year? Do you look at it, you know, here in early April and kind of look at it that way or just let it play out? Yeah, absolutely. I think – I think last year was the first year where it was like, okay, this team can make a World Series, maybe not World Series or bust because they hadn't won the division yet. But uh, now I think it's World Series or bust. Let's ride. Yeah, with the roster that they have, uh, with the talent that they have, uh, and the experience that those players already have in the league, uh, there's nothing you want more than a World Series with that team. And I I think – um, are they they their best odds at least to win the American League right now? Yeah, I don't know. They, what that is. I have them at the to win the World Series at plus eleven hundred, and I think that's the only, plus the only team I could see them being behind. Maybe would be the Dodgers in World Series odds, just because talking from a National League team that that uh, Dodgers team is insane. Um, but what are your what are your concerns about this team? I think. Right now, it's probably the starting pitching because it's Mm – you have Lucas Giolito, who is going to be what he is. I mean, he's incredible. Uh, You you, He could probably get a little better, get higher up there in the Cy Young votes. Uh, Dylan Cease, I think everyone's expecting a massive season out of him. Kopech, kind of a question mark. You don't know how how much work he's going to get in there. Lance Lynn's now out till June, so that's a problem. I do like the Johnny Cueto signing, so that's good. Um, other than that, it's there's a lot of question marks past Giolito and Cease right now. So yeah, were you looking for maybe a, a little bit more uh, 
getting a little bit more out of some starting pitchers this offseason more than the, the White Sox went out and got? Yeah, I mean, I think early on in the offseason when Robbie Ray was getting thrown around, you wanted to go get him. You wanted to bring back Rodon. Neither of those happened. And then recently, I, I think they definitely could have beat out the Padres for Manaya, but uh, didn't make that trade happen. So a lot of missed opportunities free agency-wise or trade-wise to try and build the middle to back end of this rotation. But we'll see what happens. These are our guys, and we're riding with them. Yeah, so, see, at this point, you have nothing. It, 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 it's not like you said with the rotation or whatever, but I think with the, the offense, you can almost look over that a few games, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, it's if Dallas Keuchel goes out there and gives up, I think I think yeah. he's not going to be as bad as he was last season. I think he'll fall somewhere in between last season and his first year with the Sox, and maybe be like a four ERA guy. But uh, <laughs> if he can if he can do that and keep them in ball games, we'll be fine. I, I, all these pitchers need to do three, four, five runs. The offense they're not going to drop ten every night, but they have the capability to definitely do that. Right. And, and then, like you said, to, you know, three, four runs, if you can keep it in there, like I, I don't think asking five or six every night out of this offense is too crazy to ask for. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, like you was, said, there was points last season where they went through incredible dry spells offensively. So as long as those don't happen to where, where there's going to be slumps, but as long as those don't happen at the same time, the starting pitchers are getting their teeth kicked in then I think we'll be all right. Tread water until Lance Lynn gets back and then just absolutely skull fuck everybody. <laughs> um, it's, it's, you've, go ahead, Boomy. I, so with all of, uh, you know, you talk about personnel, how do you feel like these uh, early, you know, spring training injuries, these preseason injuries, do you think they're going to have a long term or do you think Lynn is about as, you know, obviously you don't want to have to wait till June, but do you think a lot of these preseason injuries are going to have a huge effect on the success of the White Sox this year, or they're just going to be able to get through? I don't think so. I think it. I think it's last season. I think losing Eloy as long as they did, and then Robert going down pretty early on. I, I don't see that unless that happens again. Right. Then screwed. But I mean, I, I don't see Lance Lynn being out until June being a major factor here. I mean, it's not, it's not like he tore his ACL. I mean, it's a meniscus. He should be able to bounce back fine off that. Um, the, the one that hurts the most right now is Crochet being out with the Tommy John. But hopefully yeah. the, the, the bullpen moves will hold up and we'll be all right. Is, no, uh, for just, sure. is, I know it's only like, it's like two games, right, that Tim Anderson is suspended for? Yeah, the first, first two games. Two, right, so Friday, Saturday. Okay, that's what I was, I was thinking. Um, how is the Abreu statue on top of the bean construction project coming along? Well, in the the 108 tourney in the when I started doing the Twitter spaces to try and rally some votes, uh, the one for the championship game, White Sox talk joined it. And they're always tweeting that they've built the statue. And they, they have their little mock-up of Jose Abreu statue on the concourse. So they have step one done. And I was trying to negotiate a deal with them. I was like, you guys have step one done by building the statue. Let's work together, do step two, and move the statue on top of the bean. And they, they <laughs> seemed to be going for it. They were tapping little emojis, threw me a follow back. I, I think we're making progress. Maybe, maybe that now I'm not up against a direct employee of their network. That Maybe, <laughs> maybe we can work something out and, and get this construction going. Love it. Love it. Oh, uh, so obviously with the season coming up, you know, the division, who do you feel? I, I think we've heard a lot, you know, the Detroit Tigers are still a little bit far away with Correa signing in Minnesota. How do you feel? What's the biggest threat to the White Sox this year inside the AL Central? I think it's the Tigers. Already? Uh, yeah, I think I think it's the Tigers. I think the Cleveland's going to suck. I mean, they have. Yeah. They have Shane Bieber and Jose Ramirez. That's that's what they have. And if you want to throw Class A in there, you can. But Cleveland stinks. Um, the Royals, they're they're sneaky. They got a bunch of gritty guys. That I think their success basically depends on if Bobby Witt Jr. is going to be 
as incredible as everyone appears to think he's going to be. Uh, Salvador Perez, I don't think he's going to repeat what he did last season. So the Royals are probably the Royals are probably fourth place, maybe third. I, I'd say them and the Twins are pretty interchangeable because the Twins' starting pitching is not great. Yeah, well, it's funny you said about you know the White Sox, you know, and their offense. Like everybody keeps saying, oh, Minnesota, like that lineup's going to just smash. But like, I'm like, has everybody looked and seen what Minnesota's pitching rotation looks like? Because it is incredibly bad. Yeah, yeah, their their pitching rotation is awful. I mean, it, it depends. Their offense, you never know, because everyone said their offense was going to do that last season, and then they just didn't. Yeah. So, if if they get the Twins' offense of two years ago, maybe they can compete. But I, I don't think that. I think the Tigers are the biggest threat. I think, and I think the Tigers are going to be a threat for a little while too. I yeah. mean, obviously, you know, when you're picking for one one overall for quite a few years in a row. You're going to get some guys in there, and then obviously they go out and get Hobby, and then they just pick up Austin Meadows. Um, yeah, but I still think this is the White Sox division. He's not a Hobby, and oh, uh, yeah. I, I think a lot of their success depends on um, Casey Mize taking that next step. And uh, I, but I, I like the way the Tigers are, are shaping up here. So I, I could see them. The, I think the Sox still run away with the division, but I could see yeah. the Tigers like nine games back in second place. Yeah, yeah, I think I, that's I, probably fair. That was a perfect spot for Hobby to go to with uh, Detroit. Not much media going to be on him too much, and he can just go play baseball at 11 o'clock pretty much every single day. <laughs> but, yeah, I think yeah, you see that. I, I, think, I don't think that there's really going to be anyone this year that's going to compete with the White Sox. Um, they said a lot of teams are kind of working towards it. I mean, you said the Twins, decent, a uh, good offense, but at some point somebody's going to have to pitch. And I don't yeah. think that they're going to uh, have much in that category. Yeah, definitely not. So, Brian, I got to ask, how did you – were you born into a White Sox family? Uh, how did you become a White Sox fan, for those people who don't know? Yeah, I was just born into a White Sox family. Uh, my mom's a Cubs fan, but she also doesn't really give a shit about sports, so it doesn't matter. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, my dad, diehard Sox fan, so that's, that's where it comes from. Uh, gotcha. I'll tell you that. You raised me a Sox fan, and then I just took it to a whole nother level. So <laughs> I you just set the foundation. I took what Either he started and one up them by a hundred thousand. It has to I start somewhere, that. though. Yeah, I love that. What uh, where's your? So everybody talks about how good the food is at at uh, at the stadium. What's your? I mean, go to one one. What's your going? What do you get to eat at the stadium if you had the choice? One thing. One thing that's tough. I'm a big or maybe a couple. Elote. It's been a long time since I've been there, so I need some suggestions. I'm I'm a big elote guy. Those those never disappoint. The uh, on a on a hot summer day, the club sandwiches in 109. Those are incredible. They just added three new ones this year, so oh. we'll see if those are good. Um, and then they added the uh, the smokehouse place in right center last year, and those uh those brisket sandwiches were pretty fire. So a lot of good options. Nope. Really, good. <laughs> yeah. You're enticing yeah. me to get out there, man. That's for sure. I like going to White Sox games just for the simple fact of the food. It's just, I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you you can't go wrong with anything there. No, not at all. Um, but some it kind of a rougher subject, the Bulls. Um, <laughs> what's your thoughts on them? They're going to be in the playoffs. Uh, they clinched a playoff spot, but it's, it's not looking good right now. I mean, they stink. I mean, it's... <laughs> Going into, I think, well, they got smoked by the Celtics again tonight. So that now it's one in fourteen against yeah, the top four teams in the East, and that one yeah. win was against the Celtics when they were two and five. Is it's yikes? Yeah, yikes is right. It's and fake. Lonzo Ball, no more. Yeah, it's just like fake optimism though, because I mean, last night you clinched the division, even though it was on a loss. And the Cavaliers lose, so that's the only way you actually get it. Yeah, it's um, hard to get fired up over that. I mean, it's a good building step because this group should be together for a little bit. So it's a good building step to at least get to the playoffs. But, I mean, to clinch it on a day when you're losing by 25 to the Milwaukee Bucks <laughs> and you're slated to play them in the first round, it's it's not looking good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or another yeah. team you can play, the Celtics. You just get crushed by two. Yeah, I mean, either way, I'm expecting a pretty horrendous first round exit here. But 
it, it's tough to have eyeballs to see red around here now. Yeah, especially with Lonzo being out. Um, I really didn't believe it until I didn't, he like put it right on his uh, Instagram. So he kind of just confirmed it right away. I was giving him a little bit of leeway. Maybe he'll be back for the playoffs. But then when he said that, I was like, oh, no, that's unfortunate. But uh, you you work at the United Center, right? Yeah, United Center in the, for the Sox. How'd you get that? Um, my family runs the first aid company, Windy City EMS, that we have the contracts to the United Center and the Sox. So. That is awesome. I know oh, um, sweet. you were at the Eric Church concert. My sister was at that. She said it was amazing. Yeah. That was probably the best concert I've ever seen. That was that was. A good I, one. I saw him in Bloomington. He puts on one hell of a show for just being him. Yeah, I don't know how the hell he does it, but just three hours <laughs> continuous of no breaks was was pretty nice. I thought about how much money he must be making too. Just going on tour by himself, it's just him, no opening act or anything. It's like just, but he's out there for like three, four hours. It's like I don't know how Damn. he's doing it. Yeah, that, they told us that he. They so for every concert they give us like a sheet and it's like the rundown of what times things are supposed to happen. So it'd be like this opener goes on at seven fifteen, they're done at seven forty five, next act, next act, whatever. It's just a timeline of events. And Eric Church was supposed to go on at eight, but then they told us that he does not take the stage unless eighty five percent of the tickets sold have entered the building, which I guess they have a way to just track that as they're scanning what? tickets. And so he went on at like nine o'clock and then just played Ooh. until like, it was like probably like 1150, just nonstop. It was incredible. Wow. That's nuts. Absolutely what, nuts. What a flex though, that he's just like, yeah, I'm not going on until. Yeah, he's like, until like people are in the seats, yeah, the stage is going to be empty. It's, it's a baller move. I respect it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Not many guys can pull that one off. Uh, all right, Bryce. So I've got to ask you one other question, man. Outside of yourself, people you competed against in the 108 tournament, who's your favorite White Sox person on Twitter? Or maybe one or two or three maybe. Who's your favorite? Out of the whole tournament together or just the people I competed against? Uh, we could go the whole tournament all together. Okay. I mean, you got to throw White Sox Dave in there, but that's just by default. So mm -hmm. he's not even in the tournament. So he's uh, – he's – that's a given there. Um, I love Kenwell. Uh, just the way he <laughs> starts shit. That's incredible. Uh, Buzz, I faced off against Buzz. He's he's a funny dude. Um, Got to give a shout out to Zoe. Fellow, fellow Hickory Hills guy. <laughs> for There's sure. A lot of good people in White Sox Twitter, that's for sure. I have... I I'll be honest, like we've talked, we're, we're Cubs fans, but like knowing and, you know, being in the space a little bit, getting to know more and more Sox people, like there are, like you said, there's some, you know, just really good minds that, you know, it, it's every fan base, but like you see it more because it's, it's right here and, you know, just as passionate as it comes and guys who, guys and girls, you know, that, uh, you know, know the team like the back of their hand, like yourself. And you know, it's always fun to see people who are passionate about something. And there's definitely a very good group of that. Yeah. I'm not deep into Cubs Twitter is all at all. Is it anything <laughs> near what we do or no? No, there's, I mean, there's big personalities or whatever, but there's nothing like that. There could be a whole, I don't know, really tournament out of it. Yeah. It's definitely I, not. And like, I do have I, to, I do have to say that. I mean, there's not like, it's not like this big community per se. Yeah. Like, like I follow, so like, the big accounts, like Dom and... Yeah, there's, like, Dom and Carl and stuff like that, but there's no, like... There's not, like, a... I wouldn't say there's a community of 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 Cubs Twitter well, You guys are looking off a 128-person March Madness bracket. No. Oh, no. I don't think no. that would... Uh, I don't, Yeah, that's a good question. I don't... I don't think it would happen. No, yeah, I really, yeah, that I would not be. If you, if you, like... If Carl wasn't in it, I think Dom probably runs away with that thing, right? Yeah, I, yeah, uh, yeah. That's our guy. But like, it just shows you. The, I mean, it just shows you like the loyalty of the fan base too, and like of your of the White Sox of White Sox fan base, and just like how crazy it can be in a good way. Yeah, I mean, we're a rowdy bunch. I mean, like, oh yeah, like it's, it's a, I, that, I, that's pretty much how it starts. I think you just. Well, Start yeah, see, that's the problem. Cubs, the Cubs fans can't tailgate. Yeah, we can't tailgate anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Sox are going to crack down on that, too, so we'll see. 
But uh, you guys are like for the most part, are there you guys like everybody in that tournament fairly gets along, or they're like you know fractions that you know like go off against you like a gang mentality, or yeah, I mean, how, does, how does that work? That, there's people that start shit, but I, I think overall the the normal faction of white sex Twitter, at least the part that I'm part of, everyone seems to get along nicely. Everyone seems to love each other. It's like the, during the championship game, I was getting shit from like a, a subsect of white sex Twitter solely because of my affiliation to Barstool. So there's like that version of White Sox Twitter who I've never engaged with once. They don't follow me. I don't follow them. They're irrelevant. And like they're throwing out subtweets because yeah. my affiliation to Barstool. So like there's there's that version of White Sox Twitter that I just stay away from because they're not my kind of people. So, but other than that, I love everybody. So it's, it's a good group. That's it's awesome. Good. That's awesome. Well, Brian, thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, guys, make sure you follow Brian on Twitter at Brian Knights three. Is there any other social medias you got to plug Brian? No, I'm pretty much solely Twitter. We'll see uh, as the season rolls along, I might try to transfer it over to some other stuff just to build followings there. But uh, as of right now, we're just, we're riding with Twitter. Right on. And uh, you know, we've said like we're Cubs fans, but I wish, you know, no ill will on the White Sox. So other than the times that we play you this year, good luck this season. Good luck with the post game. Uh, and as always, man, thank you so much for joining us. It was great having you on tonight. Thank Absolutely. You much. Thanks for having me. Take care of Nick Madrigal for us. Oh, we will. And good luck. <laughs> We're going to need it, I think. Thank you. Thank you, boys. Awesome.